Hi everyone, welcome to the first video of the introduction to deep learning course. So in this video, we'll discuss two topics. The first one is uh, basic introduction to the concept of learning. So what is learning in general? And as, as we go into defining what learning is, we will draw analogy uh, uh, to machine learning and, um, and the components of a machine learning algorithm. And then the second part is uh, a, a historical perspective. So we will try to understand what advances have happened uh, since the start of the last century uh, that led to the development of uh, current day machine learning algorithms. So the first part is what is learning, right? So uh, if we were to define learning in general, we would say that it's using past experience so that you can do two things to change behavior in new situations, but not only that, you change your behavior after you change your belief system or the worldview. So any phenomena in the world, you have some kind of belief about this phenomena. And then when a new situation happens, you change your behavior according to your belief system. When you go through an experience, this experience changes your belief system or the worldview and then indirectly change how you behave, right? Now, there are a few things that are important to uh, point out here. So the first one is um, that this experience has to be stored somewhere, right? So this experience is usually stored in what we call memory. This memory may be explicit and may be implicit. So for example, implicit memory could be used for driving, right? So for things that we are doing subconsciously, right? So while we are learning how to drive, we store information about the experience and this ex information is implicitly uh, uh, stored in our memory, right? But we cannot consciously or explicitly recall that memory, right? Unlike the explicit memories, uh, that that we have when we when we intentionally remember something right now one other important thing to note is that this past experience right is not necessarily the same right not necessarily identical or even very similar To the new situations right so so we do generalize right so we try to instill um, we try to capture concepts from this experience so that we change our future behavior right so it doesn't have to be that we face the same thing again, right? And th that's, that's really what intelligence is about, is that you're trying to, uh, to figure out or extract the important concepts, right? Because one other feature of these experiences is that it might not be very relevant to the new situations. So the past experience may contain information that you don't need in the new situation, and may contain uh, and the new situation may contain information that's not available in the past experience right so these two components are very important uh, to uh, to be aware of the experience may contain information that's not useful and may miss information that's important okay so now the second part of this video is a historical perspective right so so this idea of learning has been um, has been there since a long time, right? And people in different fields, uh, from philosophy uh, to different fields of science, were knew about this and knew uh, about the learn like studied the learning paradigm uh, of humans, and uh, and somehow had um, like idea like um, ambition uh, to. Um, to further understand this for for social development, but also to uh, to streamline that process in some 
uh, in some way for education of new generations, right? So that's why we've been uh, interested uh, a lot even before machine learning on studying the question of what's learning, right? Now, what made us ambitious uh, to even imagine that we could build machines that do this? That's because of technological advances, right? But not only technological advances, there has been also advances in our knowledge that enable this ambition. So there are, you can imagine two different dimensions for the advances um, uh, that led since the start of the um, past century that led to the current machine learning paradigm. One is technological and the other is knowledge, right? Technological started with the invention of computers, right? And that mainly started with the um, uh, uh, research projects that were related to World War II, uh, uh, things like uh, what Alan Turing did in the Enigma project and so on, right? So, so then these, pro uh, these computers became ubiquitous uh, starting from the 1980s. And uh, because they became everywhere, so they generated a lot of data. So there has been an abundance of data, which led to what we are uh, uh, what we are living through right now, which is this new paradigm of data-driven computation, meaning that you are designing computer programs uh, that compute based on the data that it collects. Right. So there is no fixed algorithm that does things. It's it's as good as the data that is collected. On the other hand, uh, uh, there has been tremendous advance in knowledge that went hand in hand with the technological uh, advances and actually preceded and enabled the technological advances. And that started in around 1912 with um, what's known as Prinspa Mathematica, which was uh, co-authored by Bertrand Russell. And there, the idea was to formalize the concepts uh, of mathematics, right? So we wanted to know uh, how to generalize and formalize all the concepts behind uh, what we call mathematics. And uh, that pursuit of the foundations of mathematics led to uh, what's called mathematical logic. Right, so there has been a, a, a new field, maybe in the the twenties uh, and thirties uh, of the nineteen hundreds, that was studying what's called mathematical logic, which is a formalism of the rules of logic from which you can deduce all the rules in mathematics. Alongside this, there has been advances in probability, right? So things that are random that we cannot fully model how to model these things, how to deal with uncertainty, right? And so these two advances, along with advances in uh, neuroscientific observations, right, that are uh, basically observations uh, that came out from uh, dealing with rats in laboratories and so on, and these observations were about the nervous system and how the brain works and so on. Very simple observations, like some uh, what we call now neurons, like some electrical activity fires or completely is suppressed based on certain events and so on. So all these three led uh, all these three led to a paper in the 1940s called a logical calculus of ideas eminent in nervous activity. And basically the idea was that you take the observations in neuroscience and you build a mathematical model out of them. And then, which is the basically the things that fire or not fire. And then the authors started to explore what would be the potential of uh, a mathematical paradigm like that. Now, <clears throat> This has happened in the 1940s and then gradually developed after World War II. And then something else developed after World War II, which is our understanding of optimization algorithms, right? So how to formalize an optimization problem and find the optimal solution and so on. And what are the uh, uh, char uh, characteristics of these optimal solutions? Now, these three things this logical calculus of uh, observations uh, in neuroscience, along with advances in optimization algorithms and advances in data-driven computation, gave rise to the current paradigm for machine learning algorithms, which are 
data driven they are inspired by mathematical models that explain the nervous activity which is the neural model and they rely on understanding the characteristics of solutions to well formalized optimization algorithms right so um, uh, i hope this was useful to gain a historical perspective in this course will only be focused on the deep learning approach which is one approach of handling uh, uh, machine learning or one branch of machine learning and next in the next video we will try to justify the motivation behind this approach thank you